Johnson's Auto Wax present another shining half hour with Rico Marcelli's orchestra, Gail Page, the Three Kings, and Marion and Jim as that popular pair of prevaricating, peregrinating pilgrims, Fibber McGee and Molly. And Marcelli starts off the show with a shine on your shoes with the Three Kings lacing into the chorus. Sublime to the pathetic. As we find Fibber McGee and Molly, Molly seated on the running board of their venerable vehicle as Fibber works on a tire. Oh, shut. Dead red to dead red. Oh, shut. What are you doing now, McGee? Resting again? Oh, shucks, Molly. This here's exhausting work. Gotta catch my breath. Sure, the very sight of a tire tires you, McGee. What's the matter with it? Oh, not much. Treads wore off, so it looks like somebody knitted it. Sidewalls kind of caved in, and the casings busted onto the inside in four places, and the valve leaks. It ain't good for more than another 2,000 miles. So the valve leaks, you say? And did you just pay $7.22 to have them valves ground, and now they leak? Oh, shucks, Molly. <laughs> them ain't these. I mean, these here valves is different. It's the other... They ain't the same valves. These, they're, 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 these is tire valves. Them was engine valves. Oh, they was? Yes. Well, a valve is a valve, McGee, and we paid for fixing them. What do you go to do with it? Well, remember where we got it? Sure I do. When you bought the second-hand tube for 60 cents, the man threw in the boot. To boot. <laughs> yep. And we got gypped onto it, too. Rides around inside the tire like a squirrel into a cage. <laughs> Chucks, you know what I'm going to do, Molly? Sure. What? You're going to sit there on your... On your running board till the little brownies come along to fix the tire board. Oh, sure now, Molly. That's it. Now go on, McGee. Time's flying by. Put the spare on and we'll go back and give that tire man a piece of our mind. That's it. We'll do it. I'll step right up to him and give him that deadly look of mine and say, real cool and quiet, I'll say, look, mister. I'll say, clenching my fist, 
looks kind of significant. I'll say, look, I'll say. Sure, and that too looks you give him, McGee. Take the last look to the spare tire and let's get going. Okay, okay. Hand me the pliers, will you, Molly? You got them in your hand, McGee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the 45 fluttering, flutter, flutter. You just wait till I lay eyes onto that there gipper that sold us a boat that wouldn't work. Watch your driving, McGee. Ain't that the place up there ahead of us? No, that ain't the place. I tell you, Molly, you can't fool me on the locations. Why, I've trained millions of racing pigeons on to how to find their way back. McGee, to... that is the place. That place? <laughs> Shucks now, Molly, you know better than that. I tell you the place where we got this here boot was... was. <clears throat> well, maybe this is the place after all. <laughs> Looks different coming from the other direction. Sure, different and not so good. Stop the car, will you? Okay, okay. <clears throat> Gotta get them brakes fixed. <laughs> All right, McGee, now get your dandruff up and lay into him. You know what I ought to do? What? I ought to walk right up to him and bust him one right onto the chin. Without saying nary a word. Good for you, McGee. Go ahead. No, well, I would if, if I hadn't hurt my hand changing them tires. <clears throat> now, come on in, Molly. I'm right behind you. Uh, good afternoon. What can I... Oh, hello there. You back? Sure, we're back, and we'll do you no good to deny it. To deny what? McGee, get started. You betcha. I'm just itching to. Uh, <clears throat> say, you... What's the matter? Why, we, why, I... Uh, <clears throat> You the proprietor, are you? Why, sure he is, McGee. He's the one that sold you the bum boot. Oh, he is, huh? Is that so? Well, listen here, you. You, uh... Yeah? You know what I got a good mind to do? No, what? I got a... Uh, say, your face is kind of familiar, mister. Well, maybe it is. I've waited on you before, I think. You bought a second-hand tube and a boot. There you are, McGee. He's confessed, he has. Now, now, wait a minute, Molly. Uh, ain't I seen your picture into the papers, mister? I wouldn't be surprised, brother. I was the world champion wrestler for 12 years. <laughs> I was afraid of that. <laughs> uh, how much is tire patches today? <laughs> McGee, the boot, remember? The boot? The boot, foolish, the boot! Quit, quit, tell him, McGee! Quit pushing me, Molly. I'm going to tell him. But, uh... Maybe you better wait out into the car, huh? Uh -huh, not me, McGee. Never let it be said a Mahoney walked away from a fight. What fight, lady? <laughs> yes, uh, what fight, Molly? McGee, are you going to stand there and let this big bruiser talk you out of your just do's and desserts? Are you, McGee? Tell him about the boot. Okay, okay. Uh, listen, mister. Tell him off, McGee. <laughs> listen, you big brute. I got a boot from you a bit back. I got the boot and got bit, even if I did get the boot to boot. It's a bad boot, and as a boot, it ain't worth a hoot as it's a broke boot. And if you think a broke boot's as good a boot as a better boot I could have bought for two bits, you can bet your boots will bite on no more boots. Well, uh... I'd go to bat for a boot I bought for a bum boot, but a boot that's bought by a boot buyer as a better boot and brought back broke is a bad bite. So take your blasted boots, you big brute. Come on, Toots, let's scoot. <laughs> Thank you.
just heard Martelli and his men presenting that unbeatable win, place, and show combination, you and the night and the music. And now here is a little playlist, the like of which is happening all over the country these days. Scene one is in an automobile supply store. Over there is a man at the polish counter. No, but I don't believe that I could wax the car myself. Isn't it awfully hard work? No, sir, not with Johnson's auto waxing cleaner. Say, this liquid cleaner works like magic. Takes away all the stains and dirt without hurting the paint job in any way. In a... Scene two is in this same man's own garage in back of his home. The time is three o'clock on Saturday afternoon. His wife is calling. Oh, George, George, you'd better come in now. The ball game is just starting on the radio. Be right there, Helen. I'm just putting the finishing touches on the car waxing job. Wait till you see it. George started that Johnson wax job right after lunch. And in this short time, he's done wonders for his car. The finish is as bright as new, and it's going to stay that way because the wax will protect it from wear and weather for many weeks to come. When George and his wife drive down the street, the neighbors will think they're sporting a new car. Why don't you take a tip from this little experience and get some Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner tomorrow? The combination costs only 98 cents, and you'll get a can of touch-up enamel free. But more about this free offer later. And now, may I present... Tipper uh, McGee in the second act. <laughs> The scene is a garage onto a big private estate, and I'm speaking to my chauffeur. And I says to him, I says, listen, I says, adjusting my silk hat and drawing on my white gloves. Listen, I says, Wilcox, I says. Wilcox? <laughs> uh, my chauffeur's name is Wilcox, too. Oh. <laughs> kind of a coincidence, you might say. Yeah. Wilcox, I says, what kind of wax do you use onto my 18 automobiles, I says. 19, he says, correcting me. Sell one, says I, like a flash. Well, says he, I always use Johnson's Auto Wax on account of it being the best McGee, automobile. take off them white gloves and sit down. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry, folks, I can't finish the play, but I can tell you it's got a happy ending. <laughs> that dreaded Molly, why can't you laugh? <laughs> happy ending is right. Fibber must have seen our lovely songstress, Miss Gail Page, getting ready to sing. <laughs> Miss Page is going to sing Throwing Stones at the Sun. Don't wear a smile, cause it ain't worth your while You think grumbling and growling is fun Well, you're never gonna get nowhere, no how Throwing stones at the sun You pray for the rain and when it comes you complain You don't think of the good that it's done Well, you're never gonna get nowhere, no how Throwing stones at the sun When evening calls, romance calls you soon see the moon up above You keep wondering why Love's passing you by You've got to have a heart for love You ain't got no use for a duck or a goose If the eggs, they ain't gold, everyone Well, you're never gonna get nowhere, no how Throwing stones at the sun You wonder what's wrong with you and you wonder why friends are few You wonder why you feel blue Well, if you don't know Then I'll tell you You won't wear a smile Cause it ain't worth your while You think grumbling and growling is fun Or you're never gonna get no way, no how Throwing stones at the sun you pray for the rain, and when it comes, you complain. You don't think of the good that it's done. Or you're never gonna get no way, no how. Throwing stones at the sun. When evening falls, romance calls, and you see the moon up above. You're wondering why love's passing you by. You've got to have a heart for love. You ain't got no use for a duck or a goose If the eggs, they ain't gold, everyone Well, you're never gonna get no way, no how Throwing stones at the sun Throwing stones at the sun
certainly is wonderful what they're doing with radio these days, isn't it? Imagine finding Fibber and Molly put putting their best tires forward as they roll merrily along the highway. Hey, Molly, what's that there funny-looking barn over there? It ain't a barn, McGee. It's a glider garage, it is. Oh, you mean for airplanes? Sure, it's a, a what you call it, a, a suspend, a, a hanger. That's what it is. Oh, no. I suppose that fella leaning on the fence there is a hanger around her. <laughs> You get it, Molly? I said... Ah, oh, it ain't funny, McGee. And okay. watch where you're driving. I know where I'm driving. I want to talk to that fella. Get <laughs> them brakes fixed. <laughs> How are you, bud? Hi. He must be an aviator himself, McGee. Look at the football hat he's wearing. Why, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Probably just to keep his ears warm. <laughs> Is that there a regular landing field, bud? No, this is an army experimental field, testing new planes. Why? Oh, I was just curious is all. <laughs> I suppose all us old flyers gets the itch when they sees them uh, uh, hampers. You mean hangers? That's what I says, them uh, balloon barns. <laughs> I see. Uh, you're a pilot yourself? Sure he is, mister. He took many and many the flight. <laughs> a fancy. <laughs> <laughs> She means I'm a kind of a fancy flyer, son. Uh, where did you fly, may I ask? In the World War? Uh, answer, McGee. Where in the World uh, War did you fly? <laughs> I, uh, never done no military flying, bud. Just, uh, just for scientific purposes. Oh, uh, uh, you went up for observation. Yeah. Sure, but they turned him loose again. <laughs> I got you there, McGee. <laughs> I can take it. Or leave it. You see, son, my last flight was as pilot and observer and uh, navigator of the Stippelhauser Stratosphere Balloon. The what? Stippelhauser Stratosphere Flight. Nice yes. going, McGee. You said it the same twice in succession. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of the, uh, Whipple Schnauzer Stratosphere. Stippelhauser it was, son. <laughs> Named after my cousin, uh, Wilhelm Stippelhauser. Oh, McGee, you've been hiding cousins on me like they was Easter eggs on the White House lawn. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I never mentioned cousin Wilhelm Stippelhauser, Molly? No. Oh. Why, shucks, he was one of the foremost promoters of stratosphere flights, he was. I never heard of him either. Well, I ain't surprised. Matter of fact, son, I, I'd have been kind of startled if you had heard of him. <clears throat> I've always kept that there flight a kind of a secret, on account of because we had the, uh, the, the gonzola filled with newfangled and, and delicate instruments. What was filled with them? The gonzola. Ah, he means the mucilage, mister. I think he refers to the gonzola, don't you, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, McGee's the name, oh. boy. Colonel Fibber McGee, the Eagle of Iowa. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we made the Stippelheimer flight. Stippelhauser, you said? Oh, uh, well, it means the same thing in the Danish. A Stipp was a Dane himself. Great feller, too. A great Dane, you might say. <laughs> Hot dog! <laughs> uh, was your flight successful? You bet it was. You see, we loaded the gonzo... Uh, the golding... The, the round, little round steel car underneath, you know. We loaded her up into the dead of night one spring day back in 1909, long before them other stratosphere flights was ever even thought about. That was a long time back. Yep, it was a long way up, too. <laughs> I'll never forget the minute I sticks my head out of the window, Porthole. out of the side of the car, and gives the signal to let her go. Caps off, you mean? That's what I said. <laughs> well, sir, I felt her give a lurch, but it was a foggy day, and I couldn't see the folks down below very well, but... I could hear their cheers dying away into the distance as I turned to my instrument. Oh, he was up there for band practice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. These here was navigating instruments. They was a big uh, bounceometer. A what? A uh, bounceometer. Tells you how far you bounce off in the clock. Oh. <laughs> and they was a whereograph. That was to tell where you was. And an up and down a meter. And a leanograph to tell you which way the balloon was leaning. And then we... we How far up did you get? To his neck, mister. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, I could feel the car sway into the wind as I walked from one instrument to the other. I looked at the bounceometer, and then I sneaked a peek at the leanograph and the sway phone <laughs> By Timothy, them needles and hands onto the instrument was... Jittering back and forth so fast was just guesswork. Yes, I know how it is. Well, Betcha. thank goodness one of you knows. Yes. <laughs> oh, is that so? What? Well, sir, I could feel the air getting thinner, and I looked out the window, uh, the, the porthole. But Chuck's the fog was so thick I couldn't see two feet before my eyes. Well, why'd you, uh, why'd you stick him out the porthole? Stick what out the porthole? Your two feet. I didn't. <laughs> oh, sure. Now you're joshing me. Well, sir, I knew it would do no good to get nervous just on account of cause my 
instrument was not registering good, so I eats my lunch. I knew it would take about eight hours to get up to the stratosphere, so I takes a nap. <laughs> then I eats my supper. And still, the fog was so thick I couldn't see nothing. So I waited. Three days. Four days. Five days. Two weeks. I run out of food, and I ate the maps. Oh. <laughs> How'd you like Kentucky, McGee? <laughs> <laughs> well, then, on the 16th day, I begin to get alarmed to mice. So I reaches up and yanks the, uh... Ripcorn? Yeah, the dingus that lets the gas out of the bag. <laughs> but nothing happened. Then I knew I was in for it. In for a lifetime of drifting through space. Oh, well, the gas had to thin out and let you down eventually. You knew that. Nope, I didn't. On account of because it was a new secret kind of permanent to gas. Named, uh, Megillium. Into my honor. <laughs> <laughs> the balloon was crammed full. Ten thousands of, uh, quarts of Megillium gas. Some gas. So, I... <laughs> I knowed I couldn't depend on it letting me down. Well, sir, I got weaker and weaker. I et my shoes and my belt. <laughs> now, et the woodwork <laughs> off in the bouncemometer. <laughs> I felt myself getting fainter and fainter. I had to keep fighting away the thoughts of me. Me, General Fibber McGee. I thought up... you said Colonel. <laughs> well, uh, I found out later I'd been promoted whilst I was up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, I thought of me lonely and dying. Miles and miles up above the earth, when suddenly, suddenly I felt a terrific jar onto the Gonzola. Uh, what's them two fellas doing over there, bud? Uh, <laughs> going the field smooth. Oh. They're my men. I'm the commandant in charge of the field. Oh, well, I'm glad to know you, Commodore. <laughs> but tell me, uh, what was the jar on the Gondola? Uh, some fella from the Stippelhauser ground crew. He got curious and opened up the Gonzola from the outside. From the outside? <laughs> you see, I'd got into it when no one was around, and they didn't know I was there. <laughs> The darn balloon had never even been off the ground. <laughs> there I was, sitting right in front of the airport, eating my gloves and my shoes like a dead red of groundhog. Honey, are you who's dreaming of bleeding? Who goes below ties like sure from pies? Who's honey, are you? You've got a tiny touch of heaven in your fingertips. You got all the rest of heaven on your sugar-coated lips. Who's gonna get you some sunny go meeting? Whose little heart leaps to launch for keeps? Who's honey, are you? was about 25 men, including the three kings, trying to find out in their musical way just whose honey are you. And speaking of honeys, here's a honey of a free offer the Johnson Wax people are making in offering... In offering all of you, all of you, mind you, male, female, and kids, a free trip to within 42 miles of the North Pole this hot summer. 
And after you see them icebergs and northern lights, if you can honestly say that they shine and gleam and glitter any more than a coat of Johnson's auto here, axe, here, you can have... Oh, gonna quit jabbing me, Harpo Swellwax. The name, <laughs> the name is Harlow Wilcox, and we're not giving away any free trips to the North Pole. Well, well, we still got time, Shucks. I just thought of it myself. Ever uh, McGee, yeah. will you let the man do his work? Oh, sure, you never let a fellow have me. Thanks, Molly. <laughs> But, folks, this isn't work for me. I like making you an offer like this, a free offer that's really worth listening to. Go to your filling station, hardware store, or auto accessory dealer and get a can of Johnson's Auto Wax and a can of the Liquid Auto Cleaner. You pay only 98 cents for the two, and you get a can of fine-quality black touch-up enamel absolutely free. Now, a convenient brush comes with the touch-up enamel, so you can easily cover up all the small rust spots and other disfiguring marks on the fenders or chassis of your car. It will take much less time than you realize to clean and wax your car with Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. And when you are through, your car will shine like new. And dirt and grease can't stick to the gleaming wax polish. Blistering sun rays can't hurt the car finish. Johnson's Auto Wax cuts car washings way down and greatly increases the trade-in value of your car. Now, if you prefer, you can have your car Johnson Wax at a nearby service station. But I repeat that you can easily do the job yourself. Your dealer is offering you Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner, both for 98 cents. And you can get a can of black touch-up enamel free. This offer applies in Canada as well as the United States. Remember now, a cross on your calendar, some Johnson's Wax on your car, and a string on your finger, because... You have another merry musical meeting with Fibber McGee and Molly next Tuesday at this same hour. This is positively Harlow Wilcox speaking. Toodaloo till Tuesday. <laughs> Among the selections heard on our program this evening were Shine On Your Shoes from Flying Colors and You and the Night and the Music from Revenge with Music. This program came to you from our Chicago studios. This is the National Broadcasting Company.